It's time for Victory Now. The exciting outreach ministry of Victory Christian Center in Richmond, Kentucky. Join us now for a time of praise and worship and the study of God's Word with our pastor, Philip Holman. Thank you for joining Victory Now. I'm Pastor Holman, the pastor at Victory Christian Center in Richmond, Kentucky. And we are so excited that you've decided to join us for this time of praising, worshiping God, lifting up the name of Jesus, talking about the great things of God. There's a number at the bottom of your screen anytime during today's broadcast. If you'd like to speak with one of our prayer partners, our prayer volunteers, they're ready to pray with you, to pray the prayer of faith. You see, our God's still doing miracles today because he hasn't changed. The Bible is clear. God says, I'm a God who changes not. And the Bible is clear when it says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means for you and me right now. And Jesus did miracles then, and he's doing miracles now. He's still saving people, delivering people, healing people. God is so awesome. And right now, God is working for those who are reaching out in faith believing. Let's join the saints here at Victory as they worship the Lord and lifting up the name of Jesus. And don't forget that prayer line. Call. We're ready to pray with you right now. The prayer of faith. Let's bring our hands together this morning. Come on, let's wake yourself up this morning. Hallelujah. 
Jesus Christ is worthy of your praise. We'll rejoin the congregation here at Victory in a moment. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever wanted to go to Israel? to be able to walk the places where Jesus walked, to be able to see the land as Jesus would have seen it, to encounter the land of the Bible. That's something I always wanted to do from the time I was very young. When I came to know the Lord at the age of 12, I wanted to go to the land of the Bible, but it was so expensive and I could never really afford it until one day, my wife and I, many, many years later, we decided just to go to the land of the Bible. It absolutely will change your life. Going to the land of the Bible, visiting Israel, is so awesome as you read the Word of God again and begin to see these places come to life in your mind's eye. No longer do you have to think about it or try to think about what it looked like you're actually there. Well, I would like to invite you to join me, my wife, and a host of others on a tour to Israel this November. Just six months from now, we're going to be leaving the States and going on an 11-day deluxe tour to the land of the Bible. We're going to go every place that you ever wanted to go, the places in the Word of God that you've read about, we're going to visit. It is such an awesome time to go to the land of the Bible. See, so many things are happening right now across the globe, and so many things are happening right now in Israel. And I'm not talking about the unrest across the world. I'm talking about the power of God and what God is doing right now across the world, and especially what God is doing in Israel. There's a great revival going on in Israel. Many of the Jewish people are coming to know the Lord Jesus as their Savior. So many things are taking place. This is a great time for you to go with us to the land of the Bible. I want to share with you some scenes from our last tour just last year as we had an opportunity to go to Israel, tour the places, and really have an awesome meeting with God there in Israel. Come and go with us. That number at the bottom of your screen, just call the informa- Call that number. They'll give you the information. And we'll send out an information packet to you, and you'll be going with us to Israel this November. Then Jerubbabel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Moray in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned to the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down to the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee. The same shall go with thee. And whomsoever I say unto thee, This shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people unto the water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, was three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, and let all the other people go, every man unto his place. And standing here at Gideon Springs, the place where the men who were going to war against the Midianites were chosen by the Lord. Gideon starts out with 32,000, but God says that's, not, that's too many because people will begin to say that by our own hand we are able to do it. So tell everybody that's afraid to go in war for the king, war for the Lord, let them go home. And 22,000 were fearful, and they left the camp. 10,000 now against so many thousands of the Midianites. But the Lord tells Gideon again, no, there's too many. So bring them to the brook, and I'll choose who's going to war for me. And so we see these men coming down to this brook. 10,000 men, 9,700 of them, bend down on both knees to get the water. 300 of them bend down on one knee 
and lap the water, pulling the water to their hands. And the Lord says, I'll choose those 300. Why? You can see what God was talking about. If a soldier got down on his knees to lap the water, he's taking his hand off his sword. He's exposed himself to the enemy. At that moment, he's more interested in seeing to his own need than the needs of the Lord. So he has to take off his equipment. He has to take off his sword to get down and take care of his own need. But 300. No, I'll put one hand on the sword and one hand in the water because I want to be ready. How dangerous it is for children of God to lay aside the sword of the Spirit, to lay aside the Word of God, to not keep themselves wise. The apostles said, we are not ignorant of the devices of the devil. We know the enemy is going to be up to something. But God made sure that he put armor on his children. Yes, we are called to the armor of God. The helmet of salvation, whereby that we may be able to cover our minds and keep the mind of Christ. We're covered with the breastplate of righteousness, covering the vital organs that we would not be hurt or harmed in any way by the words of the enemy that would come against us, covering our heart. Our hearts can only be for the Lord. Having our loins girt about with truth, nothing but the Word of God will come up out of my spirit. No false words, no evil words will come up out of my mouth, coming up out of my innermost being. Having my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, as the Roman soldiers of the day, as they would tie their sandals, they were studded like cleats so that they could be sure-footed climbing the mountains and being able to run the race and taking up the, the, the shield, the shield of faith. It wasn't a small instrument. It was something that covered their entire body. Pick up that shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit, the Word of the Lord. That sword, that Word of the Lord, Jesus used it against the enemy in the wilderness. God's expecting you to use the power of the Word to destroy the devil. That same word that Jesus used, he puts it in you to be able to use against the power of darkness. And the word of God says, praying with all manner of supplication. You see, a true soldier of the Lord today is a man or a woman of intense prayer. They know that the warfare must be fought in prayer before it ever happens in the material. Here in this place where soldiers ch were chosen, they didn't know they were being chosen by the Lord. They didn't know that as they decided, I'm keeping my hand on my sword, I'm not going to lay it down, that God was saying, that's the man I can use. If he'll keep his hand on the sword, he's ready to fight for the kingdom. So child of God, keep your hand on the sword. Don't lay it down. The devil's waiting for an advantage. He's waiting to take some sort of advantage over you. But with the sword of the Spirit and the helmet of salvation, with being fully clad with the armor of God, there is no way that the enemy will be able to advance against the child of God. So stay clothed in your armor. Be ready. Because at a moment's notice, you may be called to the war. Yes, the war on your knees. Warring in the Spirit. There's a battle to be won. There are souls to be won. There is a harvest to gather in. Child of God, keep your armor on because the general is looking for recruits. The land of the Bible, God's chosen land, Israel, the place where his eye is forever upon. Now you can take the journey of a lifetime that will live forever in your heart and soul. Come with pastors Philip and Debbie Holman as they travel to Israel for 11 days, November 11th through the 21st. Journey with us as we travel from the Sea of Galilee down to the Dead Sea and then to Jerusalem. Walk where Jesus walked and talked. See the place of the crucifixion and rejoice at his empty tomb. Call 859-624-3553 and receive your enrollment form. The cost is very low, just $14.65 plus tax and tip from Cincinnati. Your trip includes first class hotels, your morning and evening meals, plus all the sights. The journey you have waited for is now. It's your turn to go to Israel. Come let your heart be changed. Call now, 859-624-3553. God's chosen land is waiting. Seating is limited, so call now. 
In the 14th chapter in the book of Genesis, we read a story uh, about a battle that takes place between some kings that, uh, and what ends up happening, the kings of the cities of the plains, which would be Sodom and Gomorrah, which is very, very, very far, much farther south from this location in the very northern part of Israel. Uh, the battle takes place in Sodom and Gomorrah and the kings and they're captured and there's, you know, there's a family that's captured there by, and we know him as Lot. Well, the word of God tells us in the 14th chapter, they took Lot, Abram's brother, brother's son, who dwelt at Sodom and his goods, and departed. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram, that the, the Hebrew, that for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, the brother of Eshal, and their brothers, uh, that, that what is taking place here, the scriptures continue on. When Abram heard that his brother's son was taken captive, he armed his trained servants born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And so, if you can imagine with me as you know, hundreds of miles south, you know, it's many, many, many miles south. We've got uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities there and Lot's dwelling there. And there's a war and they get captured and they're brought all this way north to the place of Dan, the city of Dan, this particular spot. So Abraham chases them from the south all the way, running almost the whole length of the country. And these 318 of Abram's servants pursuing these kings to recapture and to, to set free Lot and his family, and they chase them all the way to the city of Dan. Behind me is a, a fantastic find in Israel, one of the great archaeological discoveries in Israel, a gate of the ancient city of Dan. You can, begin, you can see where they're trying to do some restoration uh, because uh, when they found it, it's, you know, this is mud bricks. This is not concrete and not rock. These are mud bricks. And so you can see they're trying to do some, a little bit of reconstruction, trying to preserve as much of it as they possibly can. This gate then is going to date at least 3,500 years old. Uh, it's a tremendous find here in Israel. Again, uh, proving the word of God over again that Abram's chasing them all the way to Dan. You know, Abram, if he's chasing them to Dan, then Abram is going to come through this gate. He's going to come through this city gate, as you, this gate that you're seeing behind me. Uh, the, the Abram, the, the, the Hebrew, the Word of God calls him the beginning of the Jewish family all the way to this point in northern Israel. You know, it's amazing that when you walk the land of the Bible and uh, you, you begin to see these places, uh, it brings the Bible alive to you. You, 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 know, you read things and we imagine by just reading the Bible what things look like or, or, or different things because, and we imagine from our, from our own understanding of things that we see around our homes and uh, things that we're accustomed to, but coming here to the land of Israel and here in this northern part of Israel, the, the border of Lebanon is just here to my left. You know, it's amazing how much of the Bible comes alive to you and you begin to understand the scriptures like you've never understood them before. It's an awesome thing to be able to come to Israel and you really ought to go sometime and, and come and see the places in, in Israel and the places where Jesus walked and where the patriarchs, Abraham himself, walking right through this gate so many centuries ago. The land of the Bible, God's chosen land, Israel, the place where his eye is forever upon. Now you can take the journey of a lifetime that will live forever in your heart and soul. Come with pastors Philip and Debbie Holman as they travel to Israel for 11 days, November 11th through the 21st. Journey with us as we travel from the Sea of Galilee down to the Dead Sea and then to Jerusalem. Walk where Jesus walked and talked. See the place of the crucifixion and rejoice at his empty tomb. Call 859-624-3553 and receive your enrollment form. The cost is very low, just $14.65 plus tax and tip from Cincinnati. Your trip includes first class hotels, your morning and evening meals, plus all the sights. The journey you have waited for is now. It's your turn to go to Israel. Come let your heart be changed. Call now, 859-624-3553. God's chosen land is waiting. Seating is limited, so call now. We're going to sing this song that says, He's made me glad. I'm not talking about temporal things. Spit polishing that brand new car. No, 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 no. And when I'm in my worst hurt, 
I'm just trying to talk to somebody this morning. I don't care if you look at me with your face or not. There's somebody here that needs to receive this. When you are in your worst hurt, when you're in your worst pain, and then God just step in and cause a smile to come across your face and your friends and family that look at you and think, you you need to dope up on something. I mean, get you some get you something I mean get you something to dope your head up because you, 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 how are you surviving you just put a smile across your face and say it'd be alright I don't know the how but I put my trust in him see he makes me over he fashions me glad in the middle of my pain I'm talking about a God that can make you glad in the middle of your pain. Somebody up here know what I'm talking about? We're just trying to be real Christians here. We want you to understand something. We, we're not sprouting wings and we're not floating off the ground. We're telling them that the Bible says the godly shall suffer, but God knows how to deliver the godly, you see. And he fashions us glad.
I want to encourage you today to continue to trust God, to believe God no matter what you see, no matter what you feel or hear. Faith is a strange thing to the world. They don't understand it, they don't comprehend it, but it is the way of the church. It's the way of the saints. The Bible says to just live by it. Faith is just not hoping that something will take place, not praying a prayer and hoping that it caught God's attention and God's gonna answer. Faith is total dependence and relying and trusting God's word. And as you trust the word of the Lord, as you trust who he is, I'm telling you, you're going to get in contact with God. That's a communication that God's going to listen to as you reach out in faith. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Let no man think that he should receive anything from the Lord if he asks in faith wavering. If his faith is wavering, if he's asking in doubt, just begin to believe God. Believe him for who he is, and he has the power to reach and touch your life. God has the power to save. God has the power to deliver. He is our way out. He is our way to peace. Jesus Christ died that you and I might have life. And Jesus Christ rose from the dead that you and I could have victory. And if you will simply ask Jesus into your heart and life, my friend, if you've never asked Christ to forgive you to come into your life, he'll save you. He'll change your life. He'll give you that born-again experience we Christians talk about being a new person, a new creature. That's what's waiting on you. As you ask Jesus into your heart and life, confessing your sins and accepting by faith that God has heard your prayer. My Christian friend, he's still healing today. He's still delivering. He's still the same God. Go on and trust God. Believe him. Believe him for his name's sake. What he has done, he will do again to those who reach out in faith. I'd like to invite you to join us at Victory. If you're ever in the driving distance of Richmond, you don't have a home church to go to, come on and join us. Come on into the house of God and just expect great things from the Lord. Well, child of God, until you and I get a chance to be together again, let's rejoice in Jesus every day. Let's thank God for miracles that are taking place in your life right now. The word is working for you. And because of what Jesus did then, you and I can walk in victory now. Victory Now is brought to you by Victory Christian Center of Richmond, Kentucky, a ministry committed to reaching out to our community and across the world. We invite you to come and join us as we magnify the Lord Jesus with exciting praise and worship and the study of God's Word. Service times are Sundays at 10.30 a.m. and 6 p.m., Thursdays at 7 p.m. Victory Christian Center is located off of I-75 at exit 90, going away from town, four-tenths of a mile, and turn left. To learn more about the ministries of Victory Christian Center, visit our website at www.victorynow.tv. You can also write to us at Victory Now, P.O. Box 2167, Richmond, Kentucky, 40476. Or email us at info at victorynow.tv. Our prayer is that you may know the revelation the Word of God teaches about the power that Jesus has given you to walk in victory now in every area of your life.